and and so Thursday they're being pulled out. No matter if it's rain or what, they have to leave this premises. Baker, why don't you go ahead and recount the, the occurrence of what happened? All right. 
Uh, on January 16, 2019, I was assigned by Captain Pat to respond to 59510 Sunflower Drive in Yucca Valley regarding the San Bernardino County Sheriff Deputy in the systems with four dogs that had attacked an, an individual. <clears throat> I arrived at the above address at approximately 10.50 p.m. Upon my arrival, I made contact with the San Bernardino County Sheriff Deputy. He introduced himself as Jay Harden. I introduced myself. Harden said a woman had died due to likely being attacked by four dogs. Harden stated the four dogs were contained on the residence. He said one dog was located inside of the school bus that was on the property, and there, the other three dogs were inside a garage. <clears throat> Harden stated he had spoken with the owner of the dogs and had informed the owner the four dogs would be impounded. He told me two individuals who found the victim were still at the residence. He identified them as Joseph Fairbanks and the dog owner, Daniel Nelson. Arden said Nelson and his family were staying on the property in the school bus. Arden said he wanted to get the four dogs out to take photographs of them and place them into my truck. <clears throat> he had Nelson assist with the impoundment of the four dogs. We began with the first dog on the inside of the bus. Nelson entered the bus and exited the bus with a white male pit bull. I asked Nelson for the dog's name. He said the dog's name was Yeti. I saw what appeared to be blood on Yeti's face, paws, and along his back. The blood did not appear to be from Yeti. He did not appear to have any injuries on his body. I took Yeti from Nelson for Arden to photograph. After Yeti was photographed, I placed him into my county truck. Nelson, Arden, and I then walked to a detached garage directly adjacent to the residence. <coughs> Arden instructed Nelson to go inside the garage and to bring out one dog at a time. Nelson went into the garage and brought out one dog at a time. The first dog he retrieved was a male black and white pit bull. The pit bull had a red collar on and the name Huxley. I asked Nelson if the dog's name is Huxley. He said yes. <clears throat> I took the leash from Nelson and began to search for blood on Huxley. As I was handling Huxley, he growled and snapped at me. I let go of him. Due to Huxley's aggression, I did not continue to look for blood on him. Nelson took control of Huxley while Arden photographed him. I, held, I had Nelson place Huxley into my county truck. The second dog he retrieved was a female tricolor pit bull named Arrow. As Nelson brought out Arrow, I could see what appeared to be blood on her snout, face, and some on her body. The blood did not, to, did not appear to be from Arrow. She did not appear to have any injuries on her body. <clears throat> I took control of Arrow while Arden photographed the dog, and I placed Arrow into my truck. The third dog she retrieved was a female brown pit bull Brown Brindle pit bull named Freya. As Nelson gave me the leash, I saw what appeared to be blood on the top of her head, chin, and snout area. The blood did not appear to be from Freya. She did not appear to have any injuries on her body. I held Freya while Arden took photographs and I placed Freya into my county truck. After placing her into my county truck, I took photographs of the area of where Arden believed the attack occurred. After taking photographs, uh, Arden and I walked over to Nelson. Uh, Arden asked him to explain what he did before he departed the residence with the Fairbanks. Nelson stated he had put his dogs into his bus and secured the door shut and they left the, the residence. He said they returned back to the residence approximately 10 o'clock and had noticed the doors of the bus wide open. Nelson said he did not think anything of it and went inside of the residence to find Lana. He said once inside the residence, they did not locate Lana inside. Nelson said they were expanding their search outside. While searching outside, they came across Lana laying on the ground, unresponsive. I asked if he saw the dogs when they came home. He stated they were looking for Lana, and when he went out into the backyard, all four dogs were in the backyard with Lana. <clears throat> Nelson said he called 911 while Fairbanks gave Lana CPR. The paramedics arrived at the residence and pronounced her deceased. 
Kyle's and Austin, his dogs were spayed and neutered, and had current rabies vaccines. He said they were all current on their vaccines. Arrow was spayed. I asked Nelson if he had Arrow's face certificate and rabies certificates for all the other dogs. He stated he was unable to provide me with the proof at this time. Arden asked Nelson if his dogs have ever done something like this. Nelson stated they have never done anything like this. We ended our conversation with Nelson at that time. After speaking with Nelson, Arden and I went to speak with the paramedics. One of the paramedics stated the victim appeared to have several bite wounds and lacerations to her neck, arms, legs, and possible damage to her femoral artery. We ended our conversation with the medics, with the paramedics, and I departed the scene and transported and impounded the four dogs to the town of Yucca Valley and the shelter. <clears throat> On January 18, 2019, Lieutenant Molina and I responded to 59510 Sunflower Drive, Yucca Valley, to speak with the dog's owner, Daniel Nelson. On our arrival, we made contact with Joseph Fairbanks. Lieutenant Molina asked Fairbanks if she could speak with Daniel. He stated Daniel and his family were no longer allowed at the property. Fairbanks said Daniel and his family were staying at his father's residence uh, at 60691 Altaloma Drive, Joshua Tree. Lieutenant Molina asked Fairbanks to explain the events on the night of the dog attack. Fairbanks said he came to the residence to pick up Daniel and his son before leaving. <clears throat> he said to Daniel, put the two pups in the bus and close the door and put the two adult dogs in the garage. He said after dropping off Daniel and his son, he came back to the residence to pick up Daniel's wife and daughter approximately at 7 p.m. to take them to the beatnik lounge for a birthday party. Fairbanks said between 9.30 and 9.40, he received a couple of telephone calls from the victim, victim, Lana Bergman, regarding Daniel's dogs being loose and barking. Fairbanks, and Daniel said, Fairbanks said Daniel and himself left the birthday party to come back to the residence to check on Lana and the dogs. Fairbanks stated they arrived at the residence approximately at 10 o'clock. He said as he pulled into the driveway, he noticed the bus door was open. Fairbanks stated he went inside the residence to look for Lana and then heard Daniel yelling his dogs were covered in blood. Fairbanks said he ran outside saw Lana laying on the ground, unresponsive. He said he told Daniel to call 911 while he began CPR on Lana. Fairbanks said that the paramedics arrived and pronounced her deceased. Lieutenant Molina told Fairbanks we would be going to his father's residence to interview Dan Daniel and we departed. <coughs> After speaking with Fairbanks, Lieutenant Molina and I went to 60691 Altaloma Drive in Joshua Tree to make contact with Daniel Nelson. Upon our arrival, Lieutenant Molina made contact with Daniel. Lieutenant Molina and I made contact with Daniel Nelson and his wife, Stephanie Johnson. Lieutenant Molina told them their dogs had been placed under a 10-day quarantine period at the Town of Valley Animal Shelter, and once the quarantine period was over, the dogs would be moved to the Devore Animal Shelter. Lieutenant Molina advised them that their dogs were, would be held at the DeVore, animal shelter, DeVore shelter pending a potentially dangerous slash vicious animal investigation. Lieutenant Molina explained to them the process of a potentially dangerous and or vicious animal investigation. Nelson and Johnson stated they both understood. They expressed their shock as to what happened, but both believed Huxley had no part in the attack. Lieutenant Molina asked why they believed Huxley had no part in the attack. Nelson said Huxley was a sweet dog and never showed any signs of aggression. Lieutenant Molina asked Daniel for his identification. He said his identification card was in the bus still at the Sunflower property. Lieutenant Molina told Nelson as soon as he was able to get his belongings, we needed to verify his information. Nelson said his family was not staying with Fairbanks' father they were going to be moving to another residence. Lieutenant Molina asked Nelson for that new address. Nelson provided 4747 Sunburst Avenue and Joshua Tree. Lieutenant Molina and I ended our conversation on the property. On January 24, 2019, I was assigned by Lieutenant Molina to respond to 4747 Sunburst Avenue, Joshua Tree, to make contact with Daniel Nelson to verify his identity. On my arrival, I made contact with Daniel Nelson. I asked Nelson if he was able to locate his identification card. He stated yes. 
Nelson provided me with a state of Oregon identification card. I confirmed his information. I asked Nelson where he gets his mail. Nelson provided me with a PO box located in Washington. I asked Nelson for a current telephone number. He provided me with a telephone number. I again explained Nelson. I then again explained to Nelson the process of the potentially dangerous slash vicious animal investigation, and I ended my conversation and departed the residence. In conclusion, after conducting interviews and reviewing the San Bernardino County Sheriff Coroner Report, I concluded the dogs described as Yeti, a male white pit bull, Huxley, a male black and white pit bull, Arrow, a female tricolor pit bull, and Freya, a female brown brindle pit bull, owned and maintained by Daniel Nelson, were off their owner and keeper's property, specifically the bus that they were living in with the dogs on January 16, 2019, and while off their owner and keeper's property, Yeti, Huxley, Arrow, and Freya engaged in aggressive behavior while in Lana Bergman causing her death. The behavior of Yeti, Huxley, Arrow, and Freya meets the definition of a vicious animal as defined in San Bernardino County Code and should be declared as such. Right. Uh, questions that I have for you. Uh, in the report, there's pictures of the dogs. I want to confirm that these are the dogs that were involved. That is Huxley, sir. Um, I believe that is Arrow. That is Freya. Um, but that she was suffering. Her throat was ripped, is what I was told. 
and she died shortly after they arrived. Um, California, I, I know we have San Bernardino code here, but at least in my research, California Food and Agricultural Code 31603A says any dog that unprovoked in an aggressive manner inflicts severe injury on or kills any human being in conditions. When this occurred, the owner alluded to news reporters that, well, she provoked my dogs. They were just protected. And that's just complete hogwash. That's just not true. My dog, my sister was scared of these dogs. She was afraid to go out. The, the day she was killed by these vicious animals, she texted her friend who was, I believe, at the party saying, help, their dogs broke out and they woke me. I had to get them away from under her own dog. She loved dogs and put the doggy door in. They're all around my yard. Call Joe twice, I'm so scared. That was the day she was killed. The, that happened at 9.50. The text reports show that that happened. He texted at 9.50. By 10.11, my sister's body was found by her roommate. The owners have claimed that my 70-year-old sister must have attacked their dogs and provoked them. That adds insult to injury. That just can't be true. Lana loved dogs, treated them as her furry children. Now the owners want you to put these vicious dogs back into society. The owners have not accepted any responsibility for their failure to tame these vicious dogs. What would make this court think that these owners have the resources to contain these vicious dogs or that they would be more responsible in the future? Is it worth the risk? So, although everybody here on this side own dogs and love dogs, because these are vicious dogs, we're asking you to put them down and euthanize them. We're also asking you that you at least hold these owners liable for rather than rather than turning the dogs over to the county, which they could have done the night they killed my sister and avoided this hearing, they made us go through this. So the owner or keep this California Code, Agricultural Code says section 31625A, the owner or keeper of the dog shall be liable to the city or the county where the dog is impounded for the cost and expenditure of keeping the dog if the dog is later adjudicated potentially dangerous or vicious. So we think that they should at least be responsible to someone for something. Um, and then I'm told that this is inapplicable because they could buy a puppy and turn it into a vicious dog. But we would think that if there was a way for this county or for the state to prohibit these people from owning dogs to the extent allowed by law, we would like that to happen as well. There is a California code, I'm told it's not applicable, but it was 31646 that says that the owner of these dogs be prohibited from owning, possessing, controlling, or have custody of any dog to the extent allowed by law and that loss is up to three years. Now I'm being told that that's any vicious dog, but that's not what the provision says. So if you can read as well as I can, you can figure it out. I just think that these are irresponsible dog owners who probably don't vaccinate their dogs. They probably don't contain their dogs. And by the way, you know, none of us believe that these people properly secure their dogs. And, and we believe that they got, they, they got off. We believe that the county and the DA didn't do their job because we believe they were criminally negligent, you know, and, and that they, they didn't secure their dogs properly. You know, you know if, if I were to leave a handgun, everybody can own a handgun. The law allows you to own a handgun as long as you're not a criminal. You can own a handgun. If you leave on a park bench and someone comes across it and it goes off, you're criminally negligent. These dogs are untrained, unvaccinated, uncontrolled animals that are very strong, and they allow them out of that bus. They didn't. I don't know what their intent was, but it's clear they didn't secure the bus because 
they were out. And I'm getting mixed stories. Like this is the first time I was told that Joe said put two put some of the dogs in the garage and the others. And I was told all four dogs were put in the bus and somehow these dogs jumped up on the back door and were able to unsecure that door and get out. That's what I was told. These are I don't know how that happens. Um, if, you know, my <coughs> God bless my dogs, they're, they're either in my backyard, they're on a leash, or they're with me. And that's because I'm a responsible dog owner. And I don't have dogs that could kill someone. So I want to thank you in advance for your thoughtful consideration of our concerns. Um, Having these vicious creatures euthanized won't eliminate our pain and suffering, but it'll bring some closure to this family and prevent these animals from attacking anyone else. Thank you. Second. He said everything. He said everything I would have said. I'm just, I just want to say that I miss my sister and I just hope you could do what you're going to do. Okay. I'll take this into consideration. Thank you for providing your input. Um, at this time, there's nothing else Okay, so at this time, I'm going to close the hearing. Uh, thank you for coming. I'll take the matter into submission, and everyone will be notified by, of my decision by mail. Thank you. Okay.